Toyota Corolla E180 and again, back to the weak points of the new Toyota Corolla. If you look at the engine lineup and characteristics, you might think that the generation has not changed at all. The units are still the same, 1.33, 1.6, and 1.8. Atmospheric trio with their old well-known sores. The younger engine 1.3, as well as on the previous generation of the model, suffers from poor cold start and oil consumption, which increases as soot builds up on the pistons. For the longevity of the unit, a little attention is required from the owner. Firstly, this is one of those cases when the EGR valve really should be turned off. Secondly, you should thoroughly weed out gas stations with dubious fuel and in no case switch to AI-92. Thirdly, piston decarbonization every 50 to 60 TKM will be an excellent prevention of the problem. With normal care, the 1.3 engine can last 300,000 kilometers without serious costs. Questions may arise over trifles, such as replacing a leaking pump or phase regulators knocking cold, but this is still not a capital due to worn oil scraper rings. The 1.6 engine of the 1ZR FE series is the most popular and reliable, not only in the Corolla aggregate line, but also, perhaps, among many other competitor engines. All he makes the owner do is often clean the throttle from carbon deposits again, the gas recirculation system has affected. As in the case of 1.3, here the pump can also get snotty and the phase change clutches can rattle, which once again reminds us that the engineers almost never put their hands on the new generation. It is not known whether they are preparing a fundamentally new engine for us, forgetting the old one, or working on errors is inherent only to German automakers. The 1.8 engine of the 2ZR series is structurally almost the same as the 1.6, except for the difference in the volume of the combustion chambers, so the weak points of the unit are absolutely the same. Although, about the lack of attention from the engineers, I, of course, got excited, sorry. There are some things that Toyota technicians still worry about. For example, the issue of a normal, from the point of view of efficiency, automatic transmission has been long overdue and I am glad to admit that the Japanese solved it in a worthy manner. After an unsuccessful attempt to introduce a robot on the 150th Corolla, Toyota admitted the mistake and the entire engineering department rushed to screw the continuously variable transmission tested on the REV4 crossover to it. The Eisen K311 torque converter V-belt variator, which has received a place under the hood of the Toyota Corolla, is docked with units of 1.6 and 1.8 liters noisy, of course, especially when driving at high speeds, but it doesn't bother with jerky acceleration, it works smoothly. As for endurance, everything is also expected here, there are many who could not drive 150,000 kilometers without a replacement or capital, there are also those who are especially accurate, who obeyed the mark of 300,000 without repair. On average, the resource is about 200 to 250 TKM. The point here is not at all in the percentage of marriage, but in relation to things. For the reliability of such a transmission, you will have to forget about aggressive driving and change the oil every 60 TKM so that where microparticles do not clog the control valves and do not work as an abrasive between the cones and the belt. If the CVT multi-drive started to twitch ahead of time, well, or just earlier than you expected, then you should not panic yourself, perhaps your Lady Corolla in the 11th generation just wants something new, for example, firmware. Most often, the new dealer software helps. After 2015, the variator was replaced with an Eisen K313 with different gear ratios and a torque converter. Weaknesses and resource of this box is similar to K311, so should he trust the CVT of the 180th Corolla? I will answer this question as an auto selector. CVT is an unpredictable thing and buying a used car with it always carries the risk of an early expensive repair. No one, even a dealer, will say for sure how this car was driven and how it was serviced, respectively, the residual resource will remain a mystery in any case. This does not mean that a used Corolla with a CVT should definitely be abandoned by no means. It's just that the budget needs to be calculated a little differently than people are used to when purchasing a Toyota brand car. If you are still afraid of unforeseen repairs, then the six-speed mechanics will last for many years without surprises and problems. 
The only thing you will need to periodically keep an eye on is the CV joint anthers and the drive oil seals. The reliability of the Corolla E180 chassis will be the envy of many competitors. In theory, there is nothing to break here, in front of the old proven McPherson, in the back there is an even more archaic twisting beam. The first replacements occur at the turn of 100 TKM, when the bushings and stabilizer struts go to the trash, everything else calmly keeps the same amount, which makes the Corolla chassis one of the most unpretentious. The steering is also usually quiet. The only trouble can be expected only from the electric power steering mounted on the steering column. In the heat, the lubricant in the Euro loses its viscosity and, having seeped through the seals of the housings, forces you to go to the dealer again, where the assembly is not repaired, but simply replaced as an assembly. Even if you just forget about the droplets that threaten your jeans, nothing bad will happen. Brakes usually take precedence over suspension. It is difficult to meet the owner of the Corolla E180, whose caliper brackets would not rattle as the pads wear out. As a cardinal solution to the problem, you can ask the dealer to install upgraded brackets under warranty. The rest have to buy parts themselves or collective farm in garage conditions, which is much more common in our area, because this is not the only thing that you have to do on your own. In general, let's move on. A file and pliers are tools used by those who are tired of hitting neighboring cars with the doors of their car. Plastic travel stops wear out very quickly and stop fixing intermediate positions, which is why the owners of the Corolla E180 have to either buy special repair kits from the guys who realize that you can also make good money on Toyota owners or collective farms picking up metal inserts. Few people think of buying original limiters, it's expensive. The decrease in corrosion resistance with the transition to the E180 generation did not surprise anyone. Firstly, because the Corolla, by definition, cannot be better than the Camry, as you know, she also had problems with this. Secondly, a decrease in the quality of the paintwork could not affect the resistance to external influences in the best way. True, unlike the business sister Corolla, it only rusts with the trunk, which can become covered with blisters with saffron milk caps already in the third year of the car's life. By 70,000, the headlights are already decently cloudy on the odometer, especially for those who often apply a rag to them or like to actively cut through the air currents on the highway. You have to polish and cover with a film or varnish, otherwise beginner pickers may unfairly accuse the seller of twisting the mileage. Considering that the mileage on Toyota spins easily and without a trace, since it is no longer prescribed in any block and even the dealer will not be able to help in any way, there will be difficulties in determining the correct mileage by indirect signs of the interior. More precisely, slightly different estimates will have to be applied to the Corolla E180 measurements. Due to relatively cheap materials, the interior here is not the most wear resistant, it quickly shuffles and almost everything loses its original appearance. A leather steering wheel that has not been changed under warranty looks especially scary by 100,000 kilometers. Even the plastic steering wheel looks much better for this run. The same and some other questions are about the materials of the chairs. In addition to the sidewall abrasion ability, the front seats can squeak furiously over bumps, adding a couple of notes to the crickets already in the dash. What the owners of the 11th generation Toyota Corolla should definitely not worry about is the electronics and auxiliary equipment. All that can fail is the mirror control unit, which dealers, like many other things, change during the warranty period. Otherwise, any straight-handed auto electricians can handle the return to life relatively inexpensively. Probably never had to read so much about the problems of the car brand Toyota. Nothing, get used to it. Everyone wants to make money on spare parts, even the Japanese. You will be right if you say that Toyota is not the same as before, but, as we see, Corolla has not yet managed to acquire serious problems, so far it manages only with the feeling of consumer goods worth a million. However, technical problems are kept to a minimum. You can buy the Corolla E180 without much fear with any engine and gearbox, but like everything in this world, our advice should not be taken unconditionally. For example, CVT options with a real mileage of about 200,000 kilometers will have to be taken, taking into account the fact that soon you will have to invest a lot in the CVT capital, which means that the price of the car should be appropriate. 
when choosing a used car, it is advisable to lower the endoscope into the 1.33 engine in order to understand how well it is serviced by the amount of soot. In general, the Corolla is reliable and so far has learned to bother only with trifles, and what will happen next, we'll see and be sure to write.